In 5.4, you'll actually get your hands dirty in writing an ODE solver. You'll write forward Euler and backward Euler. Forward Euler is also very commonly called explicit Euler because it's an explicit solver. We will then use the explicit Euler solver we wrote to generate trajectories of the simple harmonic oscillator for different parameter sets. Here's my MATLAB implementation of forward Euler. It takes an initial condition x0, a step size h, a final time, and the show plot parameter, which I just need later on as a flag whether or not to plot the trajectories. You can pretty much just ignore this one if you need to. The first step is just to make x current, which is a helper variable, equal to the initial condition, and make x0 the first element in the trajectory. Notice that since MATLAB starts array indexing with 1, x0 will actually be the first element in the trajectory. That is, x0 will be trajectory 1. So x1 will be trajectory 2. These off by 1 errors can often be very confusing. We then just have this main loop. All it does is takes x current, which is that helper variable that we used above, starts from that position and takes one step in the direction of the differential equation. So the next element in the trajectory is simply the current position plus a tiny step in the direction of the ODE. We then update x current and loop for as many times as we need to get to the final time. We then may or may not plot the trajectory depending on that show plot parameter. The simple harmonic oscillator is given by these two differential equations and have three parameters, k, m, and beta. We then calculate x prime based on these differential equations, evaluate it at x current, and return x prime. Notice that k equals 2, m equals 0 0.5, and beta equals 0 are precisely the parameters we used in both quiz 5.3 and we'll use in homework 5.4 for the first problem. It's always a good idea when you write new software to desk check the software. That means to do the first iteration by hand and make sure that what you got by hand is what you get through the software. In quiz 5.3, we use Ford Euler to solve the simple harmonic oscillator for one time step using a time step of 0 0.1, starting at negative 1, negative 2. And if we do that, we see that we get negative 1.2 and negative 1.6, which is precisely what we got during the desk check. So I would say that our software is good to go. The first problem on homework 5.4, after we've developed the software, of course, is to generate a trajectory for 0 0.5 seconds, starting at k equals 2, m equals 0 0.5, and beta equals 0, from the initial condition negative 1, negative 2, and see what we get. So starting from initial condition negative 1, negative 2, using a step size of 0 0.1, and going to time, or final time, 0 0.5, and in this case we will not plot the final trajectory, we get that the last point in the trajectory, or the trajectory at time 0 0.5 using this solver, is position negative 1.5283 and velocity 0 0.6246. That is the answer to question 1a. For B, we want to keep all the parameters the same and the same initial condition. We want to generate a 200 point trajectory instead of a 5 point trajectory. And we'll generate this trajectory using a time step of 0 0.1 as well as a time step of 0 0.11. If we do this, we get the following plot. In this plot, the blue curve is generated using a time step of 0 0.1 and the red curve is using a time step of 0 0.11. As you can see, and as we would expect in the lecture, the red curve spirals out faster. That is, if you take a bigger time step, you're going to step farther off the trajectory, and in this case, you'll spiral out faster. See the lecture for a very nice visualization of this. From this plot, we could see that using the delta t of 0 0.11 spiraled out faster. Question 2 asks to write backward Euler. This is also called implicit Euler as it is an implicit solver. My implementation is a MATLAB implementation that takes the exact same inputs as forward Euler did, namely an initial condition, a step size, a final time, and this plot parameter. My backward Euler code is identical to my forward Euler code, except for this one key step. Remember, with an implicit solver, you approximate the next step, and then you use that as your current guess. So in the case of backward Euler, this line is identical, except for instead of evaluating the simple harmonic oscillator at x current, you use x current to do a forward Euler step, save that, and then you update the trajectory by using the slope at the forward Euler step. This can be a little bit confusing. You're approximating a step into the future, pulling the direction at that new step back in time, and then you using the direction of the new step to go forward in time. Liz provided a really nice visualization of what's happening here in the lecture, and if you're confused about this, I encourage you to go back and see that. While implicit solvers seem like they may be a little bit confusing, and you don't seem like you're gaining much, they'll become a lot more important when we do industrial strength integrators in Unit 6. Question 2. Part A asks us to find what x at time 0.5 would be, using a time step of 0.1, starting at negative 1, negative 2, using a backwards Euler solver. If we do this, we see that x at time 0 0.5 will be negative 1.2451, and the velocity will be 0 0.6136. This is precisely the answer to question 2a. 
question 2b asks us to repeat problem 1b, but instead using the backward Euler solver we just created. Again, in this plot, the blue trajectory uses a step size of 0.1, and the red trajectory uses a step size of 0.11. As we would expect, the red trajectory, using a larger step size, spirals in faster. So this is the answer to question 2b. The delta t of 0.11 spirals in faster than using a time step of 0.1. Problem 2c asks us to use both a forward and backward Euler solver using a time step of 0.1 to generate two 50-point trajectories and plot them both together to see what the difference is. Here is that plot. The blue uses backward Euler and the red uses forward Euler. Clearly the difference here is that one is spiraling in and one is spiraling out. This should not be surprising from what we just did. What's interesting here is this is an undamped simple harmonic oscillator, yet one of these is growing in amplitude and one of these is shrinking in amplitude. So the numerical solver is introducing dynamics that don't actually exist. But all we need to know for this problem is that the difference between these two is that one is spiraling in and one is spiraling out. And this is the answer to question 2C.